Hi guys, it's Eden. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that's a little bit different. I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips, hopefully ones that you haven't heard before on sorority recruitment and rush. I tried to come up with things that Basically, I struggled with during my recruitment experience. I didn't really know what I wanted out of my recruitment experience. I didn't really know what I wanted out of a sorority. I just was very confused and I would say pretty uneducated coming into things. So take everything I say with a grain of salt and keep in mind, I'm no expert. I'm not claiming to have any secret formula. So with all that being said, let's jump into the video. So my first tip is to stop caring so much. And I know this sounds like a really weird tip and I know it sounds like you don't care at all and I don't want it to come off that way. This is more to say, do not base your whole life on what happens during your sorority recruitment experience. There are other things that can really help you along in life more than just being in a sorority. And while I love being in a sorority, I think it's fantastic. I would really tell you guys, do not base your whole life off of this. I was literally going in thinking like, this is finally gonna tell me who I am. This is finally gonna tell me what I'm meant to be and what my, what my type is. Am I artsy? Am I like popular? Am I grunge? Or it could definitely provide a lot of new positive aspects in your life. I'm not saying it won't, it certainly will. But don't go in thinking this is like a matter of graduating or not graduating or something like that. There's a lot of other ways to get involved. There's a lot of other ways to meet people. There's a lot of other ways to have a full college experience than just simply being in a sorority. So then second, don't pretend to be someone that you're not. I can't even tell you guys how many times I've had what we call a PNM, a potential new member, someone who wants to potentially join or someone who wants to be in a sorority in general, talk to me during a conversation and try to give me the perfect sorority girl answers. There is no mold to a perfect sorority girl and we're not looking for you to fit any type of mold or be any type of specific person. I really can't even tell you guys how many times when I ask people like, hey, what do you like to do? And I'm looking for a genuine answer of like, Oh, I like to go camping. I love spending time with my family. I like to bake. I like to read. I like to play sports. And I get the perfect sorority girl answer of, I like to volunteer. I like to go to women's shelters. I like to go to dog shelters. It's just not real. And I can tell that any recruiter is going to be able to tell that that's not a real answer. You're trying to be a perfect sorority girl. And I'm not calling anyone out by any means. I did this too. And while I think you should obviously present the best side of yourself, you don't want to go overboard and try to pretend to be somebody that you're not and act like you're this perfect prim sorority girl when we all know that's not really any of us. Number three, this is a little bit of a weird one, but ask yourself if you could see yourself pooping in this house. So whenever you're talking to these girls, it's kind of hard to picture yourself in any type of real life situation with them. like watching The Bachelor or sitting around in your sweats or studying for finals and stressing out together. You're very much presenting the best version of you and they're very much presenting the best version of them. But if you can picture yourself in sweats with those girls and you can picture yourself just dropping a huge deuce in the bathroom there, then it's probably a pretty good indicator that you feel comfortable with these girls. And there were several houses that felt like that for me of, I could just see myself kicking my feet up here and doing some homework. Now, really, most of the houses didn't feel like that, I'm not gonna lie. Most of the time, I didn't feel like I could see myself dropping a deuce at anybody's house. It really felt very forced, very like, we don't poop here, or our poop doesn't stink. And not to call anyone out, but that's just how I felt at most of the houses. And the house I joined, I always just felt really at home. And it wasn't necessarily the conversations so much, I think, I always put an overemphasis on the content of the conversation, looking for kind of the rainbow connection in a way. Bonus tip, don't necessarily feel like you're looking for the rainbow connection. Just look for the environment and the connection like I mentioned earlier. Do you connect to the environment? Do you feel at home here? Do you feel like you could see yourself hanging out with these girls, studying with these girls, etc.? If the answer is yes, you're probably at home there. So then back to that. Could you see yourself pooping here? Are you comfy here? Do you want to kick off your shoes and watch a bachelorette with these girls on a Monday night? 
If the answer is heck no, literally get me out of here, that house might not be for you. Don't be a super harsh judge, but go with your gut. So then four, this is a really big one that definitely hits home for me. Do not go out and buy $400 worth of clothes, okay? I literally did this. I literally like acted like it was the end of the world to my mom. I was like, mom, we need a whole new wardrobe for me. These girls are richer than you've ever seen, prettier than you've ever seen, cooler than you've ever seen. And I need to keep up. I need to look like them. And I stalked all of them on Instagram. We all know we do that. Everybody does it. I stalked as many as humanly possible on Instagram. I literally had my mom follow some of them so that I could go undetected and figure out what sorority life was like. Literally just be yourself. I bought a $100 dress for prep day that I swear the house that I ended up pledging to did not even notice. Not in a bad way, but they just weren't looking at my clothes. They were happy to have me, Eden Patton, there on their prep day. They weren't looking at what I could buy, what clothes I had on, what expensive accessories I had on. It just was not about that. I literally almost forewent my senior pictures in order to have my parents buy me a David Yearman bracelet because I thought that was what all the sorority girls were wearing. Tip number five, don't feel like you need to treat this like an interview. This is not an interview. I would liken it somewhat to an interview, but I would not go in thinking this is an interview. I really made this mistake of just being so stiff and just not letting any of my real personality shine through at all. Let you shine through. I know when I'm recruiting, I'm just desperately searching for a connection with someone. I'm just shoveling away and just trying to get through the, the fake layers of the conversation and just get to you. We want to connect with you. We want to have a connection with you. Please treat it like a conversation. Treat recruitment as a whole like conversations with a bunch of potential sororities. You should not be looking at it like, oh, I had to be perfect for the last four hours. Don't feel like that because if you're having to be perfect, if you're having to go in and be perfect in that house every day, that's probably a good indicator that you don't belong there or that if you feel that way, you probably don't belong there. Tip number six, have a couple of core values outlined for yourself before going in. So in order to do this, maybe ask yourself, what's a quality of one of my best friends that I love? Or what's a quality of myself that I really love? Personally, I love friends who are just loyal to a T. Like I can leave their room and I know they're not talking crap and I can know that if I need something at freaking 2 a.m. on a Tuesday night, that they're gonna drop everything and come be there for me. So if that's something similar to what you feel, then maybe you value loyalty. If you're a person where it just grinds your gears when people lie to you, then maybe honesty. Have a couple of values that have always been important to you. Maybe independence. Maybe you don't want to be necessarily part of the crowd. So individuality, independence, uniqueness. Ask yourself what things are important to you so that you can understand what's going to be important to you in a sorority. This can kind of help you to take the conversation to a little bit of a new level and this can provide for a couple of questions as well. What's a value that you think is important to your house? What's a value that's important to you? What's a value that's important to the girls here in general? So that can kind of provide a jumping off point for some questions as well. Seven, be confident in yourself. So this one is a little bit more basic, but be confident in yourself because you do have a lot to offer and you need to know that, you need to internalize that before recruitment. Do not be depending on recruitment to tell you you're worth something. Do not be expecting that if you get a house, then you can feel like you've made it. That's exactly what I did. I told myself, once I get this house, I'll be happy, I'll feel fulfilled, I'll feel like I've done something. And it's just not true. It's really just an illusion. It's, it's not gonna make you happy if you're not already happy and confident in yourself. Even if you have to, speak this confidence over yourself every day. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am confident, I am happy, I am valuable, I am beautiful. And you need to internalize the feeling that you're worth something before going through recruitment because you can't be depending on it to give you those feelings. So eight, prepare, but don't over prepare. This goes along with number one, you don't wanna go in feeling or acting desperate. 
And there's nothing wrong with being desperate. I was desperate for a house, completely desperate. On my knees, please give me a bid. I wanna join this sorority. I wanna join any sorority. That was me. But I wish I could have gone back and told myself, Eden, you don't need to have 77 questions lined up on a piece of paper. You don't need to have backup plans for the backup plans if the conversation goes south. Literally just let the conversation go, let the conversation flow. It kind of shows whenever you're over prepared for something. In these kind of situations, I would say just go in and be yourself and be relaxed rather than being too prepared and kind of coming off like I will do anything for a bit from you guys. Because like I said, you need to have confidence in yourself and you need to exude confidence. And that's what's gonna make them love you. It's not about, oh, I have 23 questions and she only had 21. It's gonna be more about a connection. Tip number nine, ow. This is one of the more basic ones. Stray away from the three Bs. And I'm going to do a little bit of a spin-off on this tip. So if you don't know what the three Bs are, it's boys, booze, and the Bible. So People always say, don't talk about these topics. And while I definitely would urge you to stay away from talking about boys or booze, at least in the negative senses, I would not urge you to stray away from talking about the Bible. So as far as boys and booze, I think what most people are getting at when they're saying avoid these topics is don't come in asking what fraternities do you guys party with? What fraternities do you guys like? It's okay to say, you know, who are you guys paired with for the spring sing competition? Or who are you guys paired with for intramural sports? Of course those questions are okay. It's okay to talk about your boyfriend that you've had for three years. It's okay to talk about a guy friend that's in your life. You don't have to cut the conversation off if it turns toward a man or a boy that's in your life. All situations of talking about alcohol would be not good. I'm sure you guys can imagine a situation where maybe it would be appropriate to mention an experience or something such as like, oh, people in my family have struggled with alcoholism and I've really wanted to find a strong support group and that's why I'm here. That's completely appropriate. That's so normal and so fine to want to talk about a deeper topic like that, but it's not okay to talk about it flippantly. Finally, on that tip number nine, do feel free to talk about the Bible. I do really value my relationship with Christ and at that time I was a little bit timid to bring that topic up. I didn't know if people were gonna be accepting of it because I had watched videos like this that said, don't bring up the Bible. Whenever people are talking about the three Bs, they're meaning stay away from the contentious versions of those topics. Don't ask about what's your view on this contentious religious topic. Don't say anything like that. Don't talk about anything potentially political that could be contentious or controversial. Just talk about things that genuinely interest you. If you're interested in politics, again, talk about it. Then my last tip, tip number 10, is do not be set on one specific house. There are so many opportunities for growth in the Greek community as a whole. Just enjoy your time going through recruitment, get to know people, make connections. Don't get set on house XYZ. I'm gonna do the typical sorority vlogger thing and say XYZ. Don't get set on that because I did that as well and that was my experience. But, and my experience was literally getting so set on one house and being disappointed kind of for the rest of the week and not really knowing where to go from there. Just don't do that. Literally keep an open mind. There were so many houses that I had ruled out before even coming in and I just can't even tell you how stupid that is. Give every single house a chance. Allow yourself to connect with people. Allow yourself to make genuine connections. Do not put a house in a box just based on something that you've heard. But finally, the bonus tip that I'm gonna give you guys is trust the process. If you do get cut from a house, don't beat yourself up. I did that so bad and it's just, you, you can't kind of help it sometimes with asking yourself, what did I do wrong? But just don't do that. It's all gonna work out how it's supposed to. Yeah, so trust the process, know that everything's gonna work out how it's supposed to, and just really trust that and just know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, whatever happens, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna wake up breathing tomorrow. The world will keep on turning. You will not die. Everything will be okay. Okay guys, that is it for my sorority recruitment tips video. 
I really hope that this was helpful and that you guys have a better idea of what going through recruitment might be like and that maybe you can have a better idea of what things to avoid. Please know that you are so valuable and that you have so much to offer in a sorority. So I really hope this was helpful and I hope you guys have a great night.